Oh, is this camera on there? Oh my gosh, oh for sure. Oh, hello there, how goes it? I'm always honestly afraid that it's not focusing and or on. On, the focusing thing is TBD. Hello, hi, how's it going? Welcome to my humble abode. I'm so excited to introduce you to my current boyfriend. Hello. As a viewer, I frequently go through different phases of YouTube. My current binge was photography videos. I loved watching photographers talk about a specific style of photography or a specific thing that they do with photography. The editing, the cameras they use, the locations they go to. And the most relatable thing that I came across was photographers reacting to their old photography. You know, today I'm just going to copy other people and do that. First and foremost, I started off by texting my mom to see if she had any old photos that I had taken as a good old youngin' growing up in Minnesota. Honestly, it's like not bad. I really used the rule of thirds here. <laughs> and the subject is interesting. If you can't tell, that is a chrys chrysalis? A chrysalis with a monarch butterfly growing in it. That's pretty, like that's cool. I took that when I was like 10, so. That's pretty cool. Oh my God. So this photo, I used to take, <laughs> this shows how much of a small town I grew up in. I used to submit my photos to the Houston County Fair, as in cotton candy, carnival rides, cows, <laughs> deep fried foods, etc., and so on. I submitted this to a photography contest and <laughs> honey, I won. This was a grand champion photo. Again. I was like 10, maybe even younger. I This is pretty good. It'd be a little bit better if it were centered. It'd be a little bit better too if it were tilted so that it was more straight on. I mean, I'm gonna, I could fix this in post. Obviously there's no editing involved with this one or the first one, so low key, it's great. Is this just a video where I'm complimenting myself? <laughs> there are some really bad ones. <laughs> just, you wait. Here we go, a bad one. <laughs> This was a photo I took of a tree with thorns. <laughs> There's really nothing too interesting about it. I mean, the cool part is I didn't know trees could grow thorns, so I think that that was the reason I took the photo. Again, I was 10, so those are kind of boring. But the tomato photo, though, <laughs> impeccable. Let's take a trip back. The year was 2008. The location was Billings, Montana. I have some family that lives in Montana and we used to go on these hiking trips growing up, so I need to like backtrack and explain something. I used to love cameras. I used to have a total fascination with cameras. I used to love the disposable cameras that you'd buy like at Target and then you'd have the film developed at Target. I was by no means good, but I just used to have such a fascination. And this next batch of photos is, I think I had a little Sony point and shoot. So it was like my first digital camera. I was so excited because I thought it was really cool that I could take photos and then immediately see them, which is like a crazy thing to say nowadays with smartphones and everything, but at the time, it was revolutionary. <laughs> Again, 2008, I was but a young teen. It's like a pretty good photo. It would have been a little bit more interesting if the road was longer, I think, but I have such a love for simplicity and I have such a love for countryside, so it just kind of, it's, a little bit everything to me. If it were more of a wider shot, I think that that would be a little bit more picturesque. This feels a little bit closed in. This is a picture of a bunch of butterflies. <laughs> Apparently I had a fascination with butterflies. Still confusing how no one knew I was gay. Uh, again, another photo of mountains perfectly centered. I'm definitely using my composition skills well. If it were lowered a little bit, it would be like a perfectly composed photo, seeing more of the sky. Again, pretty good. And now we transition. The year, still 2008. The location, somewhere in northern Minnesota. Picture of a cloud, still have a fascination with clouds. It'd be interesting to see these photos if I had editing at the time. To be honest, I probably had no idea that you could edit a photo. I, I sound ancient, but like there were no filters, there was no Instagram, there was nothing like that. Bitch, there was no visco cam. None of that, nothing. Some pictures of loons. Oh, you've never heard a loon. I don't, I don't even know what this sound would be. Is it a chirp or more like a coo? The noise a loon makes. Oh God, it's so peaceful. So I'm glad I captured that. <laughs> 
Oh, that's pretty. I'm gonna have to turn it like this. <laughs> this is a photo of the dock outside of my cabin. That's really pretty. A picture of a bobber in the water. It's kind of a great shot, actually. Ugh, I remember taking so many, like I do nowadays, but I remember taking so many sunset photos just thinking that they were the coolest thing ever. And then as soon as I learned how to edit, it was over. <laughs> you just wait, as soon, we're gonna get to the Instagram photos here, and as soon as I learned how to edit, it was over in a bad way. For the longest time, it ruined all of the photos I was taking. See, this is so picturesque. This is very much more of a photo I would take nowadays. It shows a setting. There's a little bit of a story going on. Also, fun fact, it looks like the first girl I ever kissed liked this photo, so. Mm, I guess technically I set this up and I had my dad take the photo because I don't think this is on a tripod. So I guess this isn't technically my photography, but I set it up. It was my idea. And I remember thinking it was so cool. This one definitely has a filter on it because I remember putting a filter on it and thinking again, it was like automatically cooler. This was taken in 2009, by the way. Fast forward a year, everything is ruined. I remember taking this photo and thinking it was so cool. A jumping photo into the lake. It was like perfectly centered. The colors were bright, but it's so lame. <laughs> and jumping ahead, here's a picture from 2011. I believe I was in Sydney, Australia. This one is pretty bad, the, like the tilt is off, the composition is off, but what I like about it is the color. I love that yellow, that yellow pop is really, really nice. I had an idea. There was an idea there, folks. This one, again, the same thing. I, I did the rule of thirds really nice, the dog in the lower corner, but it's overexposed and frankly, there's just like too much going on. I think if it weren't sunset and the sky was all blue, that would be much prettier. And if I cropped it so that weird pole wasn't in the way, it's still a pretty photo though. And then the year when things were ruined. <laughs> January 1st, 2012. One of my first photos on Instagram. Here's a picture of Christmas lights with a horrible photo frame around it and horrible editing. It's so dark and it's so boring. I think Instagram secretly ruined my, oh God, look at this one. <laughs> Again, same thing. This is a picture of a sunset, but there's, it's like not pretty. I clearly just turned up the saturation. There's so many trees in the way. You can't even see the freaking sunset. <laughs> oh, but you know, the caption was sunset through the trees. So I got points for being deep back in 2012. This next one, oh, this is actually like an interesting story. This is one of my first photos I took when I moved to California. So this is down in Santa Monica in 2012. Some railroad tracks, some palm trees. I had never seen California before, so at the time, it was all brand new to me. Everything was super picturesque and really beautiful. But again, like it's overexposed. If you bend to Santa Monica, this is like the most basic ass photo you could take. So yeah, 2012, still in LA. I still have a fascination with palm trees. I think it's because growing up in the Midwest, palm trees were like the epitome of luxury and vacation. So I remember when I first moved to LA, and again, still every day I see them, I just think they're like the most interesting thing. Also somewhat a constant reminder of home because they're the exact opposite of where I grew up. We have a picture of fireworks, which I remember thinking was so cool <laughs> because it was perfectly centered and super colorful, but all those little spark flares, I used to think it was so cool. God, it's not cool. This is exactly what most of my Instagram was at that time. I used to put these fake light flares and oversaturate and use whatever Instagram filter they had at the time. Bitch, it was probably Valencia. Oh God, this is like, Ugh. I probably got so much inspiration from Tumblr because Tumblr was so new and cool at the time. And again, I grew up in a small town. <laughs> no one knew what any of these things were, so that's also why I had such a fascination with it. Ugh. It's actually gag-worthy. Oh, this one's pretty. I believe I was going to school, and this was a picture on my college campus right when the leaves were changing. Composition's pretty good, but again, the filters just ruined photos at that time. This photo would have been so much prettier if it were natural. So again, pretty, but this is like not photography. <laughs> Half of this isn't photography. This is me, this is me leading up to hopefully, I don't even know if I'm a photographer nowadays. 
And then I used to take photos like this. I mean, again, like the lighting is nice in this. I stole the idea from Tumblr, but it's just, it's just so cringe. May 2013, we are at LACMA, LACMA, LACMA. There's this really cool museum here in Los Angeles that has these really famous light poles. There's this whole little square of these light poles that are lit up and they're really romantic. So seeing them for the first time was really romantic and beautiful. Again, it's generic because a million people have taken this photo, but I like how it's tilted. I could have done so many more basic things with it, but the actual idea, it's there, it's there. Oh, this is in, this is in Swaziland, I think. Maybe? God, it would have been so helpful if I used the locations function. I really like this. A really long stretch. It makes me wonder what's down that road. It's not overly colorful. I didn't put much of a filter on it. Good job, that's beautiful. Basic, but like, cute. We have a bunch of colorful koi. I don't like all the little foam things on the top. That kind of creeps me out a bit. I don't know why it makes me uncomfortable. I probably would have facetuned those out nowadays. This is at Cannon Beach in Oregon. This is really pretty too. This is someone's random house. I used to dream about buying and living in that house just because it was so picturesque and it was right by the beach. I still kind of dream about living in that house in a weird way. This is San Francisco in 2014. It was raining, so it would have been much better if it were on just, just a cloudy day or just a sunny day, because on the right side, you can see things are quite distorted, and I probably did some weird editing that made them look the way they look. But the fact that that bit comes in front of it, and then it's centered, and the red and the blue, yeah, it's quite nice. This was in Milan. Oh, Italy, I miss Italy. Most of these last ones have been phone photos just because they're Instagram. I like to think a lot of these last ones, like if I, at the time, was really into photography and I had a real camera and I wasn't just into it on my phone. So I like to think of it like if this concept or if this photo was taken professionally, could it be good? And this one definitely, the idea of the two people, different colored umbrellas, walking out of the frame. There like lies a little bit of a mystery. Where are they going? What are they to each other? It looks like they're holding hands. It's raining, but there's no overexposure. Beautiful history and architecture. Oh, it's romantic. Oh, another photo from Italy. Oh, it's so pretty. A little bit too saturated, but pretty. I think this is a photo from the UK of ducks. Again, a little bit too saturated, but pretty. And like, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of, that's it. I'm mildly impressed. <laughs> Here I thought I was just gonna say I was the cringiest photographer in the world. <laughs> and like, I am, I'm not that good. I'm definitely getting better. I'm taking photography more seriously in that if I'm doing a real photo shoot, I photograph a lot more people nowadays, but I still do a lot of that same. I like, it's, it's funny to see I have clear themes and I have clear ideas that I still follow to this day. I haven't changed too much in that sense, but definitely what I get from looking back is that having a budget to have better equipment definitely helps. It's definitely not the most important thing, but it helps, as you can tell, because a lot of these images are probably pretty blurry. You don't need the most expensive camera, but it helps to have options depending upon what you're shooting. If you're shooting a landscape, to have more of a wider lens. If you're photographing a person, it kind of depends, but normally you'd want more of a close-up portrait lens. Or like a lot of the photos I've been doing recently, I just use a film camera and just kind of go for it. It's more about setting up the photo and taking the perfect shot than attempting to fix it in post. I think a lot of my early photos was just me quickly snapping a pic and then assuming it would be fine. But nowadays I have to remind myself to slow down and if I see something I wanna take a photo of, don't just quickly snap something and run away. Set it up, make sure it's perfect, and then I won't have to do a lot of work later. So yeah, that's so interesting. Wow, look at me. I really have so much fun with photography nowadays. It's, it's weird to call myself a photographer at all. I feel like oddly pretentious saying that. And I'm sure seeing a lot of these, everyone's gonna be rolling their eyes like you're not a photographer. You post Instagram photos. Eh. Which, fair enough, that's definitely a valid opinion, which I would agree with depending upon the day. <laughs> depending upon how high or low my self-esteem is, I would agree or disagree. 
disagree with you. I just had a campaign launch with Kenneth Cole. It literally just launched yesterday. I didn't even plan to talk about this in this video, but it just started going up. I got to photograph Kenneth Cole's Pride campaign. I did a lot of help with casting LGBTQ plus people, trying to fill all of those categories as much as possible. So we have a very beautiful, diverse group of people represented in this campaign. Since it was for a brand, I had to keep it in their style, but it still turned out really cool. And it's gonna be on freaking billboards, which is so cool. So yeah, my photography has gone from being in small town fairs to now being on billboards. Wow, what an unintentional full circle moment. Hi, mom. Okay, cool. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to go click that like button. If you want more photography videos, uh, also click that like button and leave a comment down below what you want me to talk about. Uh, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed me rambling and I will see you sometime soon, I'm sure. I hope you're having a great week. And again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click a big thumbs up, leave a comment below. Do, 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 do. You guys are far away this time. Bye.